Hey everybody, Northwood Janky here, born and raised in the North. I've decided to do my channel based on everyday things that I do, uh, normal life for me. So give me some time. Uh, this is not a full-time job for me like it is for some people. I put my stuff up and make my recordings uh, as time allows. Um, things I'll be doing and things you'll be seeing if it interests you is we're going to be swinging chainsaws, doing radio stuff, uh, jarring and canning, home repairs, welding, tractor work, uh, vehicle repairs, running sawmills, and a wide variety of things. Um, that's just what we do up here. So if these things interest you, check things out, follow me, and uh, hit subscribe, hit that like button, drop comments, feel free to ask questions. So with that, take it easy. Another thing we do in Maine in the spring is we go elver fishing, E-L-V-E-R. You want to know where sushi comes from? There it is. Uh, we catch them in our waterways here and they get sold overseas to Asia, China, Japan, Hong Kong, that neck of the woods. They're a delicacy. When we get them here, they're babies. About that long. Real small. Then, in the wild, here, when they get up into their ponds, it takes them 12 to 15 years to grow up to an adult size. Over in Asia, somehow they get in their heads and talk to them and teach them how to eat. And they do that within a year. Don't ask me how. So, a few years ago, I got into my head to build nets, which is what you need to catch them. You can use a dip net, which is a hoop with a net bag on a pole. And the other way is a fike net. Just a big net with some wings on it. Stick it in your waterway. They swim into it. It's kind of like a lobster trap. They swim up into a tail bag. They get stuck in there and they don't know how to get back out. Um, so over the last few years, my name has gotten out. Um, I've sold to a lot of people. A lot of repeat customers. A lot of people spreading my name around. Um, I have an order sitting right there right now to go to Newfoundland for a bona fide Indian tribe. That's pretty cool. Um, I sell to a lot of other tribal members individually, both stateside and in Canada. I sell to a, a lot of folks. Um, they like my products. They like how the nets work. Um, they don't complain about the prices because they know I try and keep things as low as I can for them. But if you, at the end of the day, you're still going to turn a couple dollars. So I thought I'd... Uh, throw a video together and kind of show the process of how these things go together. I'm not going to show my tips and tricks, but some of the basics. When I get the mesh, which is, this is a tail bag right here. When I get this mesh, it comes on a uh, eight foot wide roll. Looks like a big roll of toilet paper they have hanging up on the wall. And it's got about 130 yards on it, so better than 300 feet. And I spool that all off. I measure everything out, draw it all out, cut everything out. It's kind of like arts and crafts for big kids. Um, then I have to sew everything together. Put in ropes, put on floats, chains, whatever the customer wants. It's up to them how they want it finished off. Um, I build different sizes, four foot tall ones. 8 foot tall ones, 10 foot tall, I can do about whatever, adjust the price accordingly. And uh, here we go, let's make some stuff. This is what it starts off as, this roll is almost empty, 8 feet wide. Roll it down onto the floor. And Flatten it out, draw on whatever I need, trapezoids, wings, tail bags. Then I uh, cut it all out and start sewing things together. It's really disappointing. Sometimes you'll find in the middle or off here on a side somewhere, there'll be a, a run of bad material right up for several feet. So if I want to cut an 18 foot long piece like from the end here I measure back 18 feet or whatever to get a wing 
for an eight foot net. It's 18 feet long and it's eight feet wide. That's a big piece of material. But then you get a friggin' run in it somewhere. You can't use that for a wing. You have to cut around it, cut it down, turn it into something else, try and salvage it. So that's something I run into from time to time. These squares are gonna be tail bags that go on the back end of the net. And this is what the little baby eels get caught up in and get stuck inside of. Once everything's all drawn out, cut it off the big sheet, throw it up on a table, and I just cut it out. Takes a little while, but it's better than bending over on the floor. Believe it or not, I kind of know how to drive a sewing machine. So after I've built the whole body of the net, I always put a rope across the top of it, which is right here, so that the fishermen can put poles in it, it has a place to tie strings, ropes, or whatever. So, you'll see that one have it hung up here. And at the bottom, they might want a rope, or they might want a chain. So. Uh, I've got two right now. This is one of them that's getting ready to go to New Brunswick. So he doesn't want to pay shipping for chain. <laughs> I don't blame him. So we're going to put a rope in the bottom of this one. Um, those aren't devil dogs. That's just a trash box. Throw thread and spools and crap in. Um, right here. Yeah, right there. You see that white roll standing up? That's a brand new roll of mesh. That's over $1,000 right there just to get it. Plus, I have to drive over 200 miles round trip to go get it. So, let's uh, put some rope in. These stone machines, the Singer Heavy Duty, I got two of them. You know, one for a backup. The only thing I've ever had to go wrong with these things is it would get out of time. The timing would screw up. Fortunately, there's a shop nearby that can fix that because I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Other than that, these things have worked very, very well. Have to tear them apart a little bit, blow crap out of them once in a while. But uh, these have been through the paces. I have used them and abused them, both of them, over the years, and they're still running. dog over here begging for a cracker. <clears throat> The last year, I actually kept track of all the thread that I ran. 
and it was over 1,500 yards. That's not feet, that's yards. So 1,500 times three. Well, 15 times three is what, 45? That's a lot of friggin' thread for this sewing machine. Just last year. Not to mention all the previous years, not to mention what's gonna go through with this year. So, I'm not afraid to use thread. I, I sew these things together so that it, they don't fall apart. Um, so I'm not gonna bore you to death with this. This is how I put my rope in, just run it through. Same thing with chain, that's a real pain in the ass. But rather than trying to sew a channel, then drop the chain through and find out, oh, now the channel's too small and you can't fish it through. Then you gotta tear things apart. So we'll get this put in, then we'll hang it up and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, there's the ones heading for Newfoundland. Here's some wings cut out. Here's trapezoid pieces cut out, the big triangle pieces that lead down toward the tail bag that the wings attach to. Here's a funnel with a tube that's all built. And a tail bag. So now I have to put it all together. Here's a four foot tall net complete, ready to go to New Brunswick. So his eyes inside the corners of the trapezoid. We have poles, tie strings to. Here's a wing. Here's another wing. So this is four foot tall. Um, usually I will put eyes in the bottom corners here to be able to tie into or run a pole down through. I didn't on this one because when it gets over there, the guy is gonna clip chain onto this rope. So he'll be able to tie strings to the chain if he needs to. And he's gonna put his own floats on this top rope. He just didn't wanna pay the shipping. So they, all wind up swimming into this net and they all funnel right down to this point here. This is the excluder panel. It's quarter inch. They will swim right through that. This keeps out anything bigger than a quarter of an inch. The eels are smaller. And then inside you can see some other mesh there. That's a funnel. All right, here's the inside without the excluder panel. So this is the funnel and the tube goes up into the tail bag. So the net just gradually funnels everything right down to this point. Then they get into here and they go through that little tube and get stuck in the bag. Let's go take a look on the outside. From the outside, there's the excluder panel. Here's the funnel. The tube. Don't mind this ball of crap up in here. That's just some scrap I threw in. I always throw in some scrap material in case people need it for uh, patching. And then you have your whole tail bag right here. Held open by hoops. So on the other side of this mesh, they swim in, they go through the panel, they get inside of that funnel, they swim through that tube, and then they get into this big tail bag. And then they get stuck. Because this point's upstream, so your current's coming this way, and the Elver's sole purpose in life is swim upstream. So they can't figure out how to swim back through that little itty bitty hole right there and go all the way back out and around and, and get out. So then to dump them out, that would be hooked to an anchor point in your river 
or a stream, you just untie that, you untie this, and you can dump them right out through the end of the bag. So that's the gist of how the net works. This is one of the dip nets that I make. Stainless steel handle on it. Stainless steel hoop. Pretty good size sack on it with a uh, wide bottom. So it's fairly easy to dump out. So they'll stand out there on the rocks, dip these in the water, and just swing them back and forth. Catch them that way. So I weld everything together. Weld it up on both sides. So one of the complaints I've always heard from dippers was stuff they found in the stores it would always break right in here this was a weak point and they wanted something that they weren't going to break so this is what i came up with so far they like it <laughs>